You can't gang! So this is an ABAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does anybody have any questions? I love it. What's up, Econ Gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today we're going to be bringing you another one, uh, Module 5, Supply and Demand, Introduction and Demand. This is a perfect video if you guys are taking an AP course or if you're taking an introductory macroeconomics course. We need to, go to jump into the demand curve, competitive markets. This is where buyers and sellers meet for goods and services. They cannot influence the price. Now, the supply and demand model. When we see model in economics, we're generally referring to a graph. So here we are talking a supply and demand graph, and we'll see one here shortly. Now, the demand schedule and the demand curve. So a demand schedule is going to be a table that shows you how much of a good or services consumers or consumer if you're looking at an individual demand schedule, are willing and able to purchase at the different price levels. So here, if you look, you see candy bars, it's for an individual. So at 50 cents, let's say that Daniela, if the price is 50 cents, Daniela would be willing and able to purchase 30 candy bars. If the price for a candy bar was a dollar, she would be willing and able to purchase 25 candy bars and so on, right? The quantity demanded is the demand at the different price levels. This will be one point on the demand curve. So each of these represent a point and we'll go ahead and graph this and show you how this looks graphed out here shortly. Now, the law of demand is an inverse relationship between price and quantity, meaning that if quantity goes up, what is going to happen to price that will go down. And it's going to be if quantity goes down, price goes up. So they'll always be flipped in opposite directions. And you can see that clearly on the demand schedule. As we increase price from 50 cents to a dollar to 150 to two dollars, you can see that the quantity uh, being purchased is smaller and smaller and smaller as we go down, right? Or go up in price. Here is the demand curve. You could see that on the horizontal axis or the X axis, we have candy bars, the quantity of candy bars, and then on the vertical or Y axis, we have the price of candy bars. So we have price on the Y, quantity on the X, and then we have our different points. Now, one thing that I do wanna point out here is the difference between a shift in demand and a slide or movement of quantity demanded. So we have our curve here represented already. You see the different prices. If you change price or if the price of a product changes, that's just gonna be movement along the curve. It's already written for you. So you know that if the price changes from 50 cents to a dollar, that we're going to lose five purchases of candy bars. And if the demand changes, so there's different shifters for demand, we can see if demand increases, we're going to get a complete shift or movement of the curve to the right. I say to the right and increase to the right uh, because if you were to say up or down, later on that might mess you up. So right now, just keep your demand curve shifts when you discuss shifting your demand curve to the right or to the left. So an increase to the right, and then here we see a decrease or a shift to the left. Now, how can we shift demand? We can shift demand, there are five different shifters for demand, change in taste and preferences. So if you were to go on a particular diet or the United States were to find out that uh, the keto diet happens to be uh, not a healthy diet and a lot of people are getting heart problems because of the keto diet and big studies come out, our taste and preferences changes and we no longer start purchasing as much beef. That means that that curve would then shift to the left. Now, uh, change in price of related goods. There are two categories to that. There are substitutes and there are complements. Now, substitutes are things that you buy in place of one another. Uh, so for example, if you're going to a restaurant and you're a big Coca-Cola drinker and you sit down and you, you ask the waitress for a Coca-Cola and the waitress or waiter tells you that uh, unfortunately they only have Pepsi products, then if you're indifferent, right, and you're cool with drinking Pepsi 
as opposed to Coca-Cola, then uh, that would be a substitute. Or if you go to a convenience store and you want a Gatorade, uh, all they have is Powerade. They don't have all the Gatorade sold out and you purchase a Powerade, then that would be considered a substitute. Now, if you're not willing to substitute out what you were wanting to purchase, so if you're not, if you want a Gatorade and that's all you're going to buy, then uh, you wouldn't be considered, uh, it, Powerade wouldn't be considered a substitute. So you have to be indifferent in, the, in both products that you're purchasing. Uh, now, compliments. Compliments are things that go together, right? For example, uh, peanut butter and jelly is a compliment. So when you go to the store to purchase peanut butter, uh, you're generally going to buy jelly as well. And then, of course, like hot dogs, you're going to buy hot dog buns, right? So you're going to, those would be compliments with each other. Now, jump back to substitutes. If um, the price for substitute for a substitute goes down, the demand for your product is going to go down as well. Uh, so the price for Pepsi goes, if you wanna drink Coca-Cola and the price of Pepsi goes down, the demand for Coca-Cola will go down as well. Um, and then compliments, if you, were, if you have milk and cereal and those are compliments, um, then when you purchase, uh, if the price of milk goes up, then the demand for the other product is going to go down. So the complements have an inverse relationship as and substitutes have a direct relationship as far as the demand uh, and price. Now, change in income, there are two categories for change in income. There's normal goods and inferior goods. Now, normal goods are going to be goods that you purchase when your income increases. So if you get paid more, you're going to purchase nicer things, right? So that would be, those things would be considered normal goods. So instead of eating at McDonald's, let's say you get a pay raise and you eat at McDonald's every day, uh, instead of eating there, then you're going to eat at a different restaurant, maybe a sit down restaurant as opposed to uh, a fast food restaurant. And then inferior goods is if you lose income, you're going to start purchasing more of those things, right? So uh, let's say you uh, start eating at casual dining and you get accustomed to eating at casual dining and you lose your job. Well, the only thing you can really afford is fast food. So then you start eating at fast food. Fast food would be an inferior good. So here, we need to remember that normal goods, if your income goes up, you're going to purchase more normal goods. If your income goes down, you're going to purchase less normal goods. Uh, inferior goods, if your income goes up, you're going to buy less inferior goods. If your income goes down, you're going to purchase more inferior goods. Change in the number of buyers. Let's say uh, here in the great state of Texas, we got a bunch of people that uh, move in or migrate to Texas. We are going to have more buyers. Uh, that buyers will shift the curve to the right or an increase of demand. Uh, let's see a lot of people migrate out of Texas, move out of Texas for whatever reason, and we would see a leftward shift since we have less buyers in the market. Future expectations is the last one. And so price is expected to, if the price levels are expected to fall, people will buy less today uh, since the price will be cheaper in the future. So think of gas, right? Uh, when we go out and we want to fill up our gas tank, um, sometimes we see the price and uh, we think, oh man, the price is going to be less uh, a few days from now for whatever reason, right? And so we hold off on filling up our gas tank until that price is the cheapest that we think it's going to be. And then the reverse happens, right? If we see gas prices drop and we're, uh, they're, they're real cheap right now, we'll rush to, to go and get that gas immediately. So the demand will increase if, if we think the price levels are going to increase later. So right now, if gas prices are cheap, we'll fill up our tank now as opposed to filling up our tank later, right? So demand will increase if we think price levels are going to increase. Uh, demand will fall if we think price levels are going to decrease in the future, right? Because instead, we just buy it in the future, right? And so now looking at individuals compared to market demand, market demand is essentially all of the individual demand curves uh, added together. And that's going to give us the market demand, right? Here uh, earlier, we did see uh, some individual demand curves for candy bars and the price of candies. You take everybody, so mine, yours, uh, everybody in the market, we add all those together and that would be considered our market demand schedules. Okay. All right, guys, I want to thank you guys for listening to this video. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you could also please subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Peace.